Hey nerds, we are talking about the other black girl again. We are going to fully spoil the season, starting now. Welcome to the Nerd Social Show, I'm Nathan. Hi, I'm Paula. And I'm Kondra. Hey, so we did a spoiler-free review of this last week, but now that it's been out for a week, as we promised, we're going to come back and talk about the uh, the show with full spoilers. Kondra didn't join us in the last video because she was traveling for work. So I'm actually going to start with Kondra. You can let us know how you felt about this season and uh, give us a rating for it before we start spooling it. Yep. So it started off a little bit slow for me and a little bit, I almost didn't stick with it just because it was a little scarier than what I usually like to watch initially, like with the the flashbacks and visions but it i really enjoyed it actually i think really good to see more shows doing this sort of speculative fiction and i by the end of it by halfway through i was like thoroughly invested and really curious to see how the story what panned out and i would rate it like a seven out of ten seven eight eight out of ten i think mostly just because there's not a whole lot out there like this and i think they approached a really complicated topic in a very interesting way and it was creative yeah so i really enjoyed the show yeah i i think we when when paul and i talked about it last week we definitely enjoyed it as well didn't say it was the favorite thing the most favorite thing we've seen or the best thing in the world we had some comments below the video that that it was bad and then to each his own all of our, our opinions are subjective i think there's also one of one of the things i wanted to respond to and in, in part one of one person mentioned that gave the impression that people were like grading this on a curve and i watched because there are luckily more black shows i watch a fair amount of black shows i'm not like they're they're bad black shows that i wouldn't just give a, a good rating to so not grading on the curve i just and it also if i was grading on the curve i probably would have given it something higher than a seven but yeah i enjoyed it and and I've, I've also got a chance as a critic to see some of some other things that are coming out recently i think i mentioned dreaming whilst black which i had high hopes for which i didn't like as much as i like this so yeah i liked it a fair amount and we can but didn't give it a, like a 10 out of 10 or an or an eight like you did Condra because they did have some issues with the ending and some of the some some of the leaps in and not some of the resolutions to things which we can get into all right so you'd give it an eight we gave it a seven and about the show all right so if you haven't seen it this is this time to, to bail out go see the show and then come back for this conversation if you enjoy the conversation please like share and subscribe and also if you want to get the poll and, and my thoughts from last week the video should be up there i'll put a, put a link all right spoilers ahead <laughs> All right, so I think what we do when we go through this is actually do the reverse of what we did last time because I have this list of things that they told us not to talk about for each episode and we could we can I'm gonna fully talk about these things when we go through the spoiler stuff they don't have any notes for the, the first episode because there weren't there wasn't much weird things that happened except for what's her name Nella what's her not Nella Hazel, Hazel. throwing Nella under the bus like telling her on her first day there that she should speak up and that she was like I don't I didn't see any issue with the yeah. with the book it's, in this this conversation this was in the first episode she's you should speak up i got your back girl it was like i watched i mentioned when we reviewed it last week i watched this with my wife before i went to work i went to kenya and we were like she was like yeah she's super sus and then she tried to explain it away in the second episode but and it seemed like it there there was a reason but it wasn't it, i never really trusted that reason in the second episode i don't know how you guys felt yeah. when this happened this is the beginning i was frustrated that nella <laughs> bought her reasoning so easily and and was like so ready to trust her because if it was me we would have been done not only that but i think and this is a comment that i was talking back and forth with my wife about she you just met her you trusted her a whole lot but like why you know, before she betrayed you but why it's just i understand like the power of, of sisterhood and, and, and maybe like black powers but like i don't know she's not Nella looks like she's like in her 30s she should know at that certain point like not all skin folk are kin folk there's all these things that, so, yeah yeah i, I would have spent a few more I days with her I before so, I, I risk my career for a suggestion from some person that I just met. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. She just felt very yeah. naive and so trustworthy. And it's almost, you know how in horror movies, a certain type of people, when they hear, and they go just to the other. go and yeah. get out. Usually not the and black character. Yes. Other people. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. So the white character will go ahead and try to figure yeah, what's, what's that going noise? on. Yeah, hey, what's that, yeah, this is... Right. The black characters will just not try to 
fine that was going on. They were just run out. I just felt like Nella was acting like the white character in a horror movie. Me, me, and you know what? Like, what the other thing I was talking to my wife about is like, she, like, ha Hazel showed up presenting herself as like a, someone who's leaning more into her blackness than her. She, I mean, she, she said she went to Howard, whereas Nella went to UVA. And she, yeah, yeah, she has just dreads. Dread. And Nella has a white boyfriend. So maybe they were, they maybe they were leaning into that stuff. I thought that there was going to be some conflict between them because of those things, but they were, they went in a completely different direction because I didn't know what Hazel's deal was at all, of course, in, in the first episode. But I thought that was going to be the point of conflict and they didn't go that, that was an obvious route, which is why I, I think, again, I watch a lot of television and, and movies and that has been an obvious trope that lazier writers or writers that want to lean on tropes have mined in the past. There's a conflict because one person isn't black enough in, in another person's yeah. eyes and they didn't do that. I think here you see a more full spectrum of representation, right? right? And we're also black and yeah. comfortable in that and not competing in that right. sense. Yeah. Because I think like you I expected and from the title I was like, oh, is that where the tension right. is going to be? Right. Like here's other black girl who is home, home right. more black. Right. To the certainly, I think, to the white people. Right. So she how Hazel would read in comparison to Nella. And then and yeah, and then they didn't, you know, thankfully they didn't. They, they, did, they, they, they touched didn't on it that. from time to time because I, they, the, the white people in the office were really interested in the fact that she was from Harlem. And she was she also and she leaned into it as much as she and it took Nella aback a, a, a little bit because she was like she even made up the story about like her grandparents a few episodes yeah. later. Oh, this yeah. is the, the cake that my grandparents had and everyone and everyone had and the white people in the office ate that up and she knew that they would eat that up because they assumed that all black people will live in a monoculture or something like that i agree with Kendra on that because nella nella just seems just based on the typical portrayal of tv portrayal of characters like nella in an educated black woman who naturally dresses in a way that fits the office went to a certain school typically when you see those type of characters on tv these characters aren't not necessarily trying to connect with their blackness so i really showed a range of what yeah. being black looks like and not just what being black but what being comfortable yeah. in our blackness looks like more it Nella has look definitely a certain way. to this office culture i think even in another episode she even mentions that old white people work here for whatever hazel had wore something and it was and she was really impressed by what she wore but she was like old white people work here so she's definitely conformed in a lot of in a lot of ways which hazel calls her on later on in this in the season which i thought was interesting anyway okay. this guy's from the office he doesn't show up a lot in this season i thought it was just interesting to see see him in the in this show and we also get uh, what's his name this guy from will and grace eric uh -huh. mccormick and i think we also mentioned that her boss or her boss for a while is from scandal she's playing vera so yeah that's how the sort of i think that's how the end of the first episode ended i watched it a month ago so i don't remember off the top of my head but then we get into the second episode where where we have the back and forth between her friends and her friend and also her boyfriend they're talking through what happened and i, I think they're also like very suspicious of hazel especially her friend like her friend we mentioned yeah. this when we did the, the spoiler free review i she her friend is basically like nancy drew in this show and she's also the funniest person in the show i like her so much <laughs> malika so yeah the what we find out in this episode is that what we i guess the shock of this episode is that at the end of the at the end of the episode we see hazel just in the alley staring up at, at nella's place after she gives like a, a bs answer Answer to why she threw her under the bus in the first episode and she and oh. Nella swallows it and Malika is like what are you talking about that doesn't make any kind of sense like Malika is like the like the person the black person in the audience in the horror movie this this doesn't seem right at all she's yeah, a it, truth teller yeah, she's gonna yeah. tell it like it is it's yeah bullshit the right yeah reason. the voice of reason no I love yeah. Malika for that and she was also just funny and I also the interaction between Malika and yeah. Owen Ella's yeah. boyfriend right like Malika is, it's almost like they're yeah, a couple yeah, it is, it in is, a sense, because yeah. they're all yeah. so close. And you see later on, like, she's comfortable enough to, like, I mean, she just tells Owen yeah. what to do, right? It's that type of yeah. friendship relationship. Yeah, her. Yeah, so this, I think this is where it got also dark for me. I was like, is this about to be, like, some <laughs> single white female type nonsense? Yeah, yeah she definitely would stop here at the end of it. Like, yeah, it was not, it was super weird at the end of the, the, the episode.
but yeah and then and there's also when she started getting these notes saying leave saying leave okay. and she didn't know where they were coming from and also she kept having these visions as well right she kept getting these visions which weren't really i don't think they were super explained later on and, and, like she kept having these yeah, visions they were not that wasn't really at all. explained especially <laughs> since we find out how there's a supernatural slash sci-fi thing at the end of the series but that seems unrelated to the visions that she's having i'm not sure why she kept having visions it was weird and it was never and it was never explained but the messages that she's getting were explained i think in the next episode but yeah i think Mal malika even says to her i know you're, you're like aching for some melanin in your life but you're trusting this you're trusting this girl way too easily i know you're surrounded by white people but yeah come on yeah the other thing that i liked about the interaction with owen you mentioned that malika and owen pair up in in the show and one of the things that i noted last week when i was talking about the the other show dream ross black they're they don't write him in a one-dimensional he's an evil white dude way there definitely are clueless white people in this show but they don't they're not all the white people in this show aren't one note they're multifaceted they're multifaceted even if they are are clueless sometimes as well which i appreciate yeah so i think because that made me think of there's the because even Nella's bot towards the end comes around, like you see people who want to be allies, think they're yeah. allies, and are just like there's a lot of awkwardness around that allyship and how it shows up and how they present. Right. And you get some moments, I think, particularly with Nella's boss, who, Vera. who yeah, Vera, it, it becomes a little bit more authentic, but they have reflected on the damage or what they've done. But mm -hmm. yeah, I thought I just thought it was interesting how you saw like how different people popped up. I want to be your friend. Yeah. or I want to yeah, yeah I want to be an ally in yeah. some sense and then it, but it's not really quite landing and I think with Owen you also see that but he's more he's like ready to be he takes it further because he's more yeah, he's, of an and accomplice he, and, he's, right? and he's supportive like he's, he's generally supportive he's not solving the problems right. but he's supportive yeah. and he's and like you said he's, he's an accomplice and they're, they're, they're shenanigans and try, right, because he's right. also concerned about her as well so like I appreciated that I mean they do have a stereotypical woman in the off in the office who's like performatively Oh, I, I listened to this podcast, whatever. But I think everyone else is that is problematic. They're problematic in more complex ways, which is the way that I interact with white people in my life. Like that, I know people who I have interacted with in professional settings who are white who generally think they're well-meaning and just say something that is completely off. And you know, you know, and most of our interactions are fine. And then one day they say, or or they just like, or they have complete a complete blinder or about the way that they're interacting. So they're not is so they're not like performing wokeness or whatever but like, they think they're being well-meaning they think they're being but they have there's like a blind spot and that's more yeah. and that's more real i think that's more like the situations that i've had in my life and that's again not to excuse that but it's more i think it's more authentic and more more people actually act in the world as opposed to creating I, i'm not going to say making white people character characters or is this the way that black people were, were made to be characters in in the past but it's all it's just lazy writing so it's yeah. yeah but yeah I, I don't know what else happens in this episode I, I think i don't think the book blows up yet in this episode but her friends or her oh. friend and her boyfriend are definitely worried about her and worried that she's that about this new girl i think also she's made this is the scene from the second episode where her well-meaning boss who thinks that she's looking out for her and makes her apologize to this dude so yeah that that's that also happens in this episode that was such an infuriating moment. I don't know, like Paula, I'd be curious to hear what you thought of it because I think on multiple, right? Here's this young black woman. I think Vera thinks she's doing the right thing and mentoring. If you want to get ahead, this is what yeah, you do. Yeah, she probably makes similar basically... com compromises or she thinks that yeah, she but thinks that right she's that. made similar compromises, but there's an intersectionality that she's not appreciating. Yeah, that yeah. she's not aware yeah. of, right? And so she's asking this a young black woman to apologize to this very clueless right man the layers of just like how messed up this situation yeah. is or just like yeah i think in this moment i was just fed up with her yeah. and it's like you you deserve whatever you get at this point yeah yeah uh -huh. i think there i she like think to think well. that she means well she's yeah she is but it, it doesn't really make sense and the only thing i could explain it with is that she's just trying to be on top of her job she feels like it's a very competitive field and 
and she just laser focused on just being the number one. On the other hand, it doesn't make sense in this world of social yeah, which we, media. Yeah, we find out later and something so, yeah. it blows up. Yeah, right. Have, yeah, yeah. You have, well, it's right. You have your writer who's writing a book about a black woman, and you have someone who's working for you <laughs> who is a black woman and giving you this feedback, and you just shutting it down. It just does not make sense. As no, it doesn't. Editor and it's, in position. It doesn't at all. No, like and, logically. But I feel like this, or even for the time that we're in, right? Because you're talking about like this would be post, like all of these movements to not I, have this sort of foresight yeah, to be exactly. like this could blow up if we if we don't handle it. Right I don't way. know. I don't. Yeah, this is the time when people get canceled. So this is now because there is social you, media. So you what was think, she thinking? What was going to happen honestly, when it comes out? I, I think yeah, but that's yeah, privilege. it's privilege. And also, I think yeah. that while everything they were saying is true, like it's like obvious that you should, I don't know, maybe consider the viewpoint of the, the only black person or one of the only black people in the office. And actually, when she gave her this, when she gave her this feedback, she was the only black person. And then the other black girl came. Yeah, you would think so. I actually, you know what? I came to my mind. I think this is very representative of what a lot of black people go through today or have been going through is not being believed when yeah. they're voicing when something is wrong or when society has it's not necessarily looking for their best interest. A lot of time what a lot of white people will say is yeah. just disregard and, and, that, and right? The country you were saying that you, you would think that would shift after like 2020 and the protests, but I don't know, like you would think so, but I, when the protests happened, you, you guys know that I run a nonprofit and there are white people in my life that are on my board and they really thought that was going to be a shift in society. And I was like, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been black, yeah, no, I, I've been black my entire life. And, right. <laughs> I, yeah. I think we're on the same page. I think it's one of those things where I'm always like, I'm surprised because I'm like, you have all of this information and context and none of it makes it into your set off like a light bulb or something in your head to be like, hold up, let me, wait a minute, let me stop and think about this, right? I think it's that continue. Maybe the older I get, the less surprised I'll be, but I'm just always like, it must be so nice to walk no, through like this said, it's world. Like you said, it's perfect. Just like, they, they can yeah. tune into this stuff when they want to, whereas yeah. we have to be aware of how their world operates and also what's happening in our world or just for like safety purposes right what and like it's yeah. self-preservation like so so yeah we have to juggle both of those worlds and, and move back and forth and they can just tune into to what's happening with our world it, it they can whatever they want to or not or you know like more of them were paying attention and like the reason that I was skeptical back in 2020 was because the pandemic was happening i feel like what was probably going on there is that a lot of people wanted to leave their house because they were in their houses for months and it just coincided sided with it. I don't know that a similar thing happens if it wasn't in the middle of the pandemic and people were in their houses for and people weren't pent uh, up in their houses for four months. That's how I felt at yeah. the time. I think a lot of people looking back feel like there there could have been a big like movement and a lot of things changed, but like policing hasn't changed really. There's still qualified immunity. There was the George Floyd bill never went through Congress. There are a lot of things that people were talking about because they wanted yeah. to change the subject on the, the pandemic that never came into to realization. And now that the world is back and we're not in a pandemic anymore, you don't hear the people talking about them as, as much. I think just before we started reviewing this and I, sorry, just before I went to Kenya in like August, a bunch of women who were like at all these studios who were part of the d diversity inclusion initiatives were like either fired or left as well. So like there, there was a lot of lip service back in 2020. So yes, you would think after all <laughs> that stuff, people would be like more clued in. But I think... Vera and lots of people like Vera still exist in corporate structures. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So not surprising actually, based on my experience in the world. So yeah, so that that's how the second episode ends with her in the alley looking super super sus. And then at the beginning of the next episode, she has this the manuscript and she's so she actually left the manuscript for her to read because she knows that again, Nella naively is reading this as oh, she came all the way here. Cause I think she's in Brooklyn. She's in Brooklyn and Luchin calls all the way in. 
Leeds is only in, in Harlem. That's a, there's a there's a long distance between those two places. If you don't if you don't know New York, it's not it's if you're not yeah. if you're not going to Brooklyn for a reason for to, for a party or something or like for a reason. There's no it's not like a, a quick drop by. So she and she mentions that to to her boyfriend and he brushes her off friend. a little bit and she he just says it's, it's nice, which was a little irking for me. But like you know it was I guess it was nice, but like we know what happened at the at end of the last episode when she was in the alleyway staring right, at her right. like a serial killer. I think, but it did make me wonder because I think Hazel's barely niceness when she shows up, and then later on in the series where and you have some people who are suspicious of people who seem overly nice, like they want to be people mm -hmm. pleasers, and I think there are like other moments in the series where you see like little alarm bells because Hazel shows up at Owen school maybe he, he, even he, and even then he, Owen started to it was like that's super weird why you came all the way up with it, yeah yeah at some point the niceness is, this is a little really too a, this is too much right this is too syrupy I, I feel like what's go ahead, that sorry. no but it just made me think of but Malika like yeah, from, from the yeah, moment she, she never felt, trusted her oh, and she's the only one and Malika right. is the only one she showed her true face to like she, she came to her job to show her true face she's the only one she showed her true face to yeah it, I think it's Hazel and you right because she's I can't yeah. fool this person so I need to be real and let her know because she thinks I'm serious if she thinks I'm a threat yeah. she'll back off right and you and you do see Malika wait because you have to think about like the type of person who, who's going to threaten right. you right like, show up at yeah. your job and threaten you and say you need to be worried about me that's a psycho <laughs> right and so you want to approach that person yeah. differently like, than oh, you would like yeah. another person yeah so I, I think Malika was taking it as oh this girl is trying to jockey for your position in the in your work and now she understands like it's on a separate level like it's a just like she goes there when she goes there right. and, and threatens her but yeah yeah we get a little bit of backstory with Diane and Kendra Ray as well. I think this is also the episode where we see we see them as children here, and we also see Kendra Ray at sorry, not no, yeah, Kendra Ray, Ray at Harvard and her and the issues that she's having there. And I, I guess that was kind of foreshadowing. Kendra is in this Ray is in this very white situation, and she's very weighed down by probably all the microaggressions that she's facing every single day. And, and Diana not being there, she's she dismisses it. And Kendra Ray, I think in that flashback is you just don't understand and i guess that's supposed to be like the seeds of diana thinking maybe white people don't have to think about these things earlier like i was saying earlier like we have to we have to understand their world and also our world as well just to, to keep safe but it's that requires a, a lot of mental energy and i think yep. their diana's thinking is you, it's a wasted mental energy that you could be using to advance whatever cause or whatever thing you actually are interested in right so that's her point of view rather which is interesting it's interesting and it's a it's an interesting point of view that I think has some merit to it. If, I, I'm not sure how well it would stand up to scrutiny because there are real yeah. threats that you need to be aware of if you, if you, so it, it does require more energy than white people have to expand. That's part of their privilege, right? Their privilege that we are aware of. So anyway, sorry, you were going to say? No, it's an interesting I think because later in the series as we start to see what is actually happening and what the power dynamics mm -hmm. are like Diana Gordon's argument I don't know that I would call it how say it's convincing but it's, it's compelling it's compelling it's, it's compelling yes. right it is compelling and i think for me the issue is more just about like free will and choice right because her strategy is to remove any sort mental of, burden yeah of yeah this is true oh, right. yeah, yes choice choice and, from the yeah right i don't yeah um, it's if, if I didn't have to think about how I show up, how I present or presenting myself in a way that doesn't threaten people, like being concerned about other people's comfort or, or my safety, right? Like in a professional, not just in a physical sense, but in a, yeah, in a professional sense, right? Because you see where a lot of job is mm -hmm. threatened right yeah. what could you do if you didn't have to make all of these calculations from like how you wear your hair right and paul and paul, we probably all have those how do i want to look when i go into this space right yeah, I don't think Diana I is entirely that's wrong. Just, that's just, I think that's just a true and honest representative of the corporate world that we have been in for decades. It's only maybe a few years ago that things really started okay. to loosen up a little bit. I remember as far back as 20, 2010, where when I started a job, I had to wear my hair a certain way until everyone got comfortable with me, and then I would let my yeah. natural hair out. 
right? So it's the truth. She's not entirely wrong in in her goal, how she's yeah. going about it. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's interesting as well because her message is a little mixed, right? Because I feel like Hazel moves in this space with a space of the publishing company with a far less burdened than Nella does. Maybe maybe because she's maybe <laughs> because she's wearing the hair grease. Yeah. But not all the women who are wearing hair grease can are moving as 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 freely as Hazel is because they, some a lot of them I think we were talking about earlier have straightened their hair. They're conforming to whatever situation there, but maybe they're not maybe they're not annoyed by the fact or like angst by the fact that they had to straighten their hair. They're just doing whatever they need to do to get the get out to get through their thing. Well, Hazel is not like the other girl, girls. Hazel is the recruiter. She's yeah. part of the admin team. And as she was put in that role in that company by someone specifically that that has power in that Yeah, true. That's so true. they're going to be okay with her hair being whatever it is. She has a very specific purpose, which is why I'm questioning whether she's actually using the grease or not. Because she's not, she hasn't lost any I, type of. I think she is because based on the conversation that she, she has is. at the end of the theme, she just says <laughs> it's, it's easier. I think she is. I think what you're saying is probably true, though. I think maybe the reason that her hair isn't straightened is because, unlike the other parts of the world, although they did say that the publishing company did contribute, like financially, to those other those places where the women, the other women, had jobs, but they don't control they don't control those other institutions. Unlike unlike those other institutions where those the other women who are affected by the hair grease. This is actually run by the, what's his name? Richard? Yeah, this is actually run by Richard Ragnar. And yeah. Richard Ragnar yeah. actually knows what Hazel's purpose is in this company, specifically to recruit Nella. So maybe that's why she's able to wear the hair that she has. Because we also saw her recruiting other girls in the past. When we get to her episode, and she has straight hair sometimes, <laughs> but because Richard runs this company, maybe that's why she's able to be freer in the way that she's moving. But no, but you see her at well, the- I think it's, she had straight hair so i think she changes into who Maybe, her target yeah. person yeah. wants to connect with nella More wants to uh, yeah, connect because, with yeah, an she, afrocentric uh, women in the workplace so that's how yeah. she had to come in at the other women probably wanted to connect with a straight long hair yeah, you're women, right you're right that's probably as. the reasoning for the that's probably the reason rather because as malika said she was start she was starving yeah. for melanin so maybe that they targeted her they they did it they have we saw that they have a whole dossier about her so they probably did a psychological profile yeah, no, no. on her she's she's except for that she at the very beginning of the first episode there was like one other person of color in the office an asian girl who who, who laughed so maybe they were like okay she definitely she we have to make hazel a person that she aspires to be we, we're going to have her dressed in yeah. a particular way because she is impressed with the way that she dresses she's she's impressed with the way with the her her the way that she moves in the world and the way that she doesn't necessarily care about what the white people think in, in a certain respect respect and also plays the white people i think they all they had all these things for nella to aspire to and hazel i think that that was very del deliberate yeah this is the conversation we were talking about earlier which you no wait no this is her no this is sorry this is they yeah, this right. is where they, they make can... up and then this is the conversation yeah. we talked about earlier where she comes and she puts her on notice which is yeah and she actually had an appointment so she came so, so she had an excuse to be there because after she talks to her she goes to her appointment but yeah it's uh, it's, it's, it's definitely got going. Uh, oh and i know. think this is also the episode where the party happens right and hazel's i, I love tlc it's just it's just it's just it's just it's just, it's just, it's just like tlc comes on it's and like, this? Like a, yes but this that just was reminded funny. me because something in one of the later episodes where i think it's hazel's episode where she's complaining to diana because she's having she starts using the hair grease but she's having right. issues with her specifically with her memory because i was like when she said i think this was this is still early enough in the show where i'm like i don't know which direction this right. show is going is it super or not is hazel even human right like all of the weird thing i was like playing yeah. around with and then she but and she was like she didn't she know who at that point. Is, she, like, is she pretending to right. be human right. <laughs> i was like you don't i don't need to be a fan but how could you be i feel like of a certain age a black woman of a certain age on planet earth and not know who tlc was and at that point i was like okay she must be like some <laughs> like something right and she's just like, not human. it wasn't just it wasn't just any tlc song it was one right. of yeah. their right one of their, if you were alive at so period, these women you... i don't know if they were alive because no. i think they're supposed to be in their 20s so maybe they weren't alive but still 
I was playing Michael Jackson with two middle school kids a couple of years ago and they knew he was and they probably he probably right. died when either before they were born or just when they were little small children so black people tend to play music of their youth in the in their household so they would have heard even though they're 20 something they would have heard a TLC they would have heard TLC song and they, they grew up in a yeah. black household so I don't know I, I definitely oh, but my ma- point with this was, oh, sorry. like now this scene yeah now this scene makes sense because if, if it does affect her memory yeah. right if she has other issues from the use of the hair grease I'm like oh okay now that that makes sense she's just mm-hmm. not maybe that's an aspect of the hair grease it's I think that was it though I think she Malika. just she was yeah. trying to with Malaika yes Malaika was wearing a uh, TLC shirt and she probably sensed that yeah. Malaika was not feeling her at all and so, Th- hey, that was oh, definitely her yeah. first approach and they could, like fought, quickly figured her out and then and then that's when she was also she it's also when she had to fight with uh, with in the bedroom she was like took her to the bedroom and she had to fight with 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 Nella and she's like this girl has to go and yeah and like you said the next day they make up and then she shows up basically to threaten her so her first tact was to try to be sweet to Malika and that didn't work yeah. and she's well this is my this, this is the this is the approach I'm gonna take with you now yeah oh and this is also when we meet what's her name Shawnee uh-huh. yeah this is episode 104 I forget what um Hazel's real name is but Shawnee tells her real name so Shawnee how Eve. is it Eve Eve but that's also yeah, not her real true. name yes, right because she because so, Shawnee was yeah. also a, a, a target so she she meets Shawnee in, in in the in the subway here and she and this is where we find out she's the one who's been leaving her the messages although again it's not really explained why she keeps having visions but anyway I think that's how the go ahead and I say that they really did her wrong with that wig yeah that wig, her, especially when they show her later when she looked more sane yeah. and ugh, get over that I think this is also the episode where she suggests a sensitivity read and they do the sensitivity read and the sensitivity reader flags a bunch of things and then they try to and Vera tries to bury the sensitivity read well before then let's talk about how the it's sensitivity that, read well, actually happened and that yes yes horror, the, which is when yes that's uh, how Hazel, Hazel tried to get her, uh, get her get her back in her corner right she's like didn't uh, didn't Nella suggest that and it's oh yeah we have all these ideas they fly around I don't know where the ideas come from <laughs> Yeah. Right. Same body. Yeah. Yeah. Very really tried to yes, take the yes. credit for um, that. That was just horrible. Anyway, that's when it was suggested, and I think that's also when it came back as as a problem. I guess that was most of what happened in four. It looks Nathan is editor here. Our conversation lasted an hour and a half, and even after I edit, it was an hour. So we've broken this up into two parts. Check out our video for episodes five through ten. Like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks.